real pleasure to co uh, present this with uh, Dr. Ryan Matthew, and I'm going to talk about minimally invasive therapy. So I have to uh, thank um, the NHL Surgical Med Tech, all the industry partners and all the collaborators, and more importantly, my local team in Leeds that continues to support me to innovate in this space. I want to take you on a journey. As I tell you, I'm not a real surgeon. So why am I here? You know, it's a bit strange, right? So you know that surgeon, what they used to do when they want to remove a diseased organ, that's what we used to do, we open up the patients and then we remove the organ. So they decided that's probably, we can do better than this and then start developing laparoscopic approach or keyhole surgery. And indeed, more recently, they thought robotic surgery has been much better. So here we go. And in the meantime, there's a group of us, there's a very small group of us because we are truly the minority in, in the uh, healthcare sectors. So we are interventional radiologists. We've been sticking needle into you know, organ with cancers, and then at the tip of needles, and we deploy either heat or ice-based energy to treat cancer, minimally invasively. And this field is emerging and it's been formed in 2015, known interventional oncology, and it now firmly sits alongside surgical oncology to provide cancer care, alongside medical and clinical oncology. So what? are the technology that we can actually deploy at the tip of the needle. For a long time, we can use heat-based energy and radio frequency ablations. We move on to cryo ablations in the 2000s. Um, that is largely used in renal cancer. And more recently, uh, microwave ablation has become the main stage for liver ablations. And we know that although the thermal ablations are very good for treating uh, cancers, but they are not very good if it's come close to some vital structures because you obliterate anything close by. So you have tumors very close to important structures like vessels, you read about that. non thermal technology is what we really like to have to deploy so that we don't damage the surrounding important structures. So we begin to have electrical energy, no irreversible electroporations, and more recently we are going to pipe in electrochemotherapies that leads is going to be a chief investigator site to lead this alongside Newcastle and King's uh, in the UK for this uh, respect trial. And actually more interestingly, since the pandemic, we have the opportunity to work with Histostonic, which we will um, I'll present a case study because this was selected by NHL for presentations and to tell you about journey, how the collaboration industry really truly can work. So in 2020, um, in the beginning of the picture, there's a lady called Jeanette Lee. She's not here, she's a global sales director for Histosonics. And before then, she used to work for j and and she knew me from that. So she asked me whether I'll be interested to take part in the trial. I look at her, I look at the time, I say, it's May 2020. I say, have you not noticed that it's in the middle of pandemic? What are we translating this for? And then actually, I decided not to make a decision on my own. I called friends, other HPB surgeons, they were very supportive. And then actually, even then, they were very supportive. I thought, how am I supposed to take this forward in the middle of pandemic? I feel a bit, you know, vulnerable. So I called a few more friends. I, I contacted David and then V, and then they say, they were very kind. We went along and met his astronomics uh, research team and then everything else history since then. As you know, it's now FDA approved uh, in, in the US for commercializations, and they also been awarded the IDAP process in January 2024. So what is histotripsy? In essence, it's the ultrasound technology. It's a high pressure short focus ultrasound pulses that we can actually deliver to the focal point tissue that cause cavitational mechanical disruptions and actually literally liquefies the tissues. So we can use it to treat any tissue line and indeed it's been used to treat cancers up to the focal point. It's non-radiations, it's on and off effect, it's very, very precise. So the first trial was Hasha Hope Liver trial with a chief investigator sign in the UK alongside our sister sign in Newcastle. We performed this uh, in 2021 that uh, led to FDA approval. It's a prospective multi-centers regulatory approval trial. 
to evaluate the safety and efficacy of histosonic therapy system at jail on this site that for the treatment of primary metastatic renal tumor. 44 patients. Uh, so this is our first patient. She's known as Sheila. I was hoping to share a story. And actually, this is before treatment. You can see a day after and two years later, she remains well. She's on holiday this week. Otherwise, she would be here on the stage speaking to all of you because she would love to. So for the FDA approval uh, process, there were 44 patients, 49 tumors were included initially. 44 patients were evaluated for major complication, but only 44 tumors evaluated for primary efficacy because there were four dropouts. However, we met both primary endpoints, so FDA granted approval. So we moved from the first generation system to this really pretty looking uh, Addison's. In fact, it's named after Thomas Addison. So it is something that please do come and have a look later on. So it has a better treatment interface. You can actually target, plan, and localize. And actually at this point, last night, David kindly reminded me as I helped to translate this innovation, I might become obsolete. And my answer to that is, I think that you know, if I'm a process and a journey to become obsolete by making patients' uh, treatment better, then I'm very gladly to be part of the process. So you can actually monitor the treatment in real time. It's all automated. You can see the bubble cloud. It comes inferiorly at the bottom part and it circulates outwards. And once you plant the, and the treatment is automated, it requires very little input from the operators. So as I say, this is Sheila. I just want to share with you, we will have no sounds. But one day you get to hear her, and then so she basically said that this is one of the most amazing experience she has. And um, I think that the question is, why do we innovate? We innovate because we wanted to improve the quality of our patients' care better. Thank you.